We made a Pong game using the free games and turtle libraries. In this video, I will explain the project coding process in detail, step by step. You can start making your own games in Python by watching this video, which I will explain all the codes of the project in detail. So let's start. You can download and develop the source codes of the project in this video from the Turtle Code GitHub account. Before starting the project, you can support us by following the Turtle Code YouTube channel and other social media accounts. Create an empty Python project. Add the library we will use to generate random numbers in the project to your project file. Add the turtle library that we will use while developing the game in the project to the project file. Add the free games library, which we will use while developing games in the project, to the project file, such as the turtle library. Determine the size of the desktop application. Use the done command for the project to run properly. It gives an error because there is no free games library in our project. Click on free games and add the necessary library files to the project. As you can see the download process has started. After the download is complete, the free games library has been added to our project file. Let's run the project and test it. As you can see we have created a blank desktop application. Now let's start coding our project step by step. Since the game of Pong is a two-player game, create a two-state variable. Create a function to draw the objects we use to hit the ball in our desktop application. We will send the necessary parameters to this function. Lift the pencil upwards as we don't want to see the pencil lines on the way to the designated position. You will understand this process better soon. Go to the point we have determined in the coordinate system using the parameters we sent to the function. Before going to the specified position, we raised the pen with the up command. Because I don't want the pen to draw when going to the designated position. Lower the pen when it reaches the designated position. Because we start drawing. After drawing, let's fill the objects we used to hit the ball with color to make them look better. Create a for loop to do the same thing twice. After going to the point determined by the parameters sent to the function in the coordinate system, move forward in the width parameter. Since the pen is down, we will see this line. Rotate the pen 90 degrees to the left. Go forward using the height parameter sent in the function. Rotate the pen 90 degrees to the left. We started to fill in the object we created with the start filling command. End the command. Create the main drawing function that we will use in our project. Send these parameters to the function we just created. This is our first ball hitting object. We set the X position in the coordinate system to 400. Because the size of our desktop application is 840. When calculating this, we divided 840 into 2 and minus a distance of 20 units between the rackets and the desktop end screen. We set the first ball hitting object dimensions as 10 and 50. Let's send the necessary parameters to the function to draw the second ball hitting object. The calculations for the second ball hitting object are the same as for the other. Call the function we created. Run the program and test it. As you can see, we have drawn the ball hitting objects. Let's change the lengths and x start positions of the elements and better understand how the function works. As you can see, this is how you can change the size and position of hitting objects. Now let's animate the ball hitting objects. Create a function to move the ball hitting objects. We will send two parameters to this function. There are two ball hitting objects in the project. We need to determine which ball hitting object's position to change. For this we will use the state variable we created earlier. Determine the function speed. We will soon change the number we use in the ontomer function. 
After that you will have a better understanding of how the ontomer function works. Let's use the tracer function that we use like the ontomer function. We're going to change that position shortly. You will have a better understanding of how the tracer function works like the ontomer function. We will move the ball hitting object using the keyboard keys. Let's use the listen function for this. When we press the E key on the keyboard, let's move the first ball hitting object 20 units up. When we press the D key on the keyboard, let's move the first ball hitting object 20 units down. When we press the O key on the keyboard, let's move the second ball hitting object 20 units up. When we press the L key on the keyboard, let's move the second ball hitting object 20 units down. Let's run the project and test it. As you can see, when I pressed the E key, the first ball hitting moved up 20 units. When I pressed the D key, the first ball hitting object was moved 20 units down. When I pressed the O key, the second ball hitting object was moved up 20 units. When I pressed the L key, the second ball hitting object moved 20 units down. But there is a problem here. There is a strange situation as previously drawn ball hitting objects are not deleted. We'll fix this shortly. But now let's start the coding process for the ball we will use in the project. Let's move our pencil to the zero start position in the drawing function. Let's create a ball with a radius of 10 units in the starting position. Let's run the project and test it. As you can see, we have created a ball with a radius of 10 units. But we forgot to lift the pen while going to the starting position with the pen. That's why we see this line. Now on the way to the starting point, let's pick up the pencil and destroy the line. Let's run the project and test it. As you can see we used the up function and destroyed the line. An arrow appears with the ball. Let's eliminate that too. Using the hide turtle command we can remove the arrow and only see the ball. Let's run the project and test it. As you can see, we only see the ball. Note that the drawings are made slowly and in order. We'll be speeding up drawings using the tracer command a little later. Now let's use the tracer function before drawing. Let's run the project and test it. As you can see, the drawings and the ball were created instantly. Now let's start the process of moving the ball. We will animate the ball in vector. For this, let's create a variable using the vector feature of the free games library. Let's create a value function and start the ball drop process. In this function, the fall direction of the ball is not clear when the application starts. It actually gives the game realism. You will understand better when we run the desktop application. You can determine the speed of the ball by changing the numbers here. Let's create a vector variable and use the value function we created in this variable. Let's direct the ball we created in our drawing function according to the variable. Create a variable using the position of the ball relative to the x orbit in the coordinate system. Create a variable using the position of the ball relative to the y orbit in the coordinate system. Animate the ball using these variables. Let's run the project and test it. As you can see the ball has moved. But there is an error in the ball drawing. This bug had previously occurred in ball hitting object as well. We can solve this two problems by using the clear command at the beginning of the drawing function. Thus, when the drawing is repeated, the screen will be cleared first, and then the drawing process will take place. But as this happens so quickly, we won't see it. Run the project. As you can see the ball is moving down smoothly. At this stage, we will create two rules. In the first rule, if the ball touches the ball hitting object, its orbit will change to the opposite, and the ball will move towards the other ball hitting object. The second rule is that if the ball hits these points on the Y orbit in the coordinate system, it moves into the screen instead of leaving the screen. 
For this, let's create if queries and animate the ball according to the position of the ball. If the ball's y orbit is greater than or less than 400 in the coordinate system, multiply the y orbit by minus. So where did this number 400 come from? At the beginning of the project, we created a square with a side length of 840 units using the setup command. Since the radius of the ball is 10 units, the diameter of the ball is 20 units. Therefore, instead of using 420 units, which is half of 840 units, we subtracted the diameter of the ball from 420, which is 20 units. Therefore, if the y orbit of the ball is 400 or minus 400 in the coordinate system, we multiply the y orbit of the ball by minus 1 to reverse the ball. Thus, when the ball hits these points, it will move inwards. Likewise, we want the ball to bounce back when the ball hits the ball hitting object. While drawing the first ball hitting object, we determine the x orbit in the coordinate plane as minus 350. We will create an if query to match this. If the ball's position in the x orbit is less than minus 370, we need to find out if the ball hits the ball hitting object. For this, let's create two variables related to the size of the ball hitting object. First, let's determine the starting position of the ball hitting object. After that, let's add 150 to the starting position and find the positions of the ball hitting object. Here we added 150. This is because we previously set the length of the ball hitting object to be 150. If the y orbit of the ball is within the confines of the ball hitting object, we must make the ball roll inward. For this, let's multiply the mathematical value of the ball's x orbit by minus 1. If it is not within these limits, let's stop the program. We created if queries for our first ball hitting object. Let's do the same for the second ball hitting object. Create two variables to find the position of the second ball hitting object. Here we have added the number 150. Because we had previously set the height of our second ball hitting object to be 150. If the ball is within the boundaries of the second ball hitting object, as we did with our first ball hitting object we multiply the ball's x orbit by minus 1. In this way, the ball moves inwards when the ball hits the ball hitting object. If the ball is not within the ball hitting object limits, end the game. Run the program and check. As you can see the ball is a little further out than the welcome element should be. Let's set this up. Move the first ball hitting object 30 units to the left and the second ball hitting object 30 units to the right. We can make the ball hitting object widths 10 units instead of 20 units. Pay attention to the speed of the ball. Run the program and test it. The ball is a little slow. We can speed this up. Let's use the number 25 instead of the number 50 in the Ontimer function. Run the program and test it. The ball will move a little faster. If the ball does not touch the ball hitting object as it leaves the X orbit of the screen, play stops. But there is a problem here. Ball hitting object moves very slowly when we press the keys we set on the keyboard to animate the ball hitting object. Let's send the 50 units parameter to the move function instead of 20 units. Run the program and test it. As you can see, the ball hitting object has gotten a little faster. Let's speed up the ball a little more using the Ontimer function. Run it again and test. Now let's change the background color of our application. Run it again and test. We made a Pong game using this Python project turtle and free games libraries. Do not forget to improve the project by making changes to the codes. If you have any questions let me know in the comments.
You can also support us by subscribing to the Turtle Code YouTube channel and other social media accounts.